Hey, Audacious Church family, hope you're doing really well. So good to be with you on this second day of our devotions in the new year. And again, let me take the opportunity to wish you a very happy new year, praying that this is just an amazing year for each and every one of you in Jesus' name. Well, part two, Romans 8, 28 says this, and we know that in all things, God works together for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purposes. Now, yesterday we highlighted that the word optimism comes from the French word meaning the best thing. Living with an optimistic state of mind may set you up for being disappointed occasionally, but it is better to raise the bar in your expectations and see growth and expansion in life uh, at the risk of being disappointed than never really believing for greater things to come. So we're going to believe for great things together this year. We're going to believe for the God of heaven and earth to do the good. Now, I want to say this, no matter how much you believe for the good, that God will bring good out of every circumstance, the reality is this, is that sometimes things get tough. And when you set off to pursue a dream, when you set off to pursue a God vision, it isn't long before you realize that life is not always easy. And I don't need to be a prophet to say that. How many of you know life isn't always easy? There may be times when you hit an obstacle or a challenge. And many of us maybe will have faced the thought historically and definitely at times this year where we'll say, why is life never easy? You know, when I was a kid, I used to really love riding my bicycle. Um, My mom and dad bought me my first little bicycle and then I had a rally bicycle and then I saved up for a racer when I was a teenager. (coughs) And I used to love riding my bike. I'd ride at school every day and I found that riding downhill was fun because it was easy. And when you're at the top of the hill, you have got this excitement about what it is ahead. You can see the downhill ride and you can you you imagine the pace and the speed and the thrill of the the wind in your hair, etc. You know, sometimes dreams can be like that. It's like standing at the top of a hill. We're looking forward thinking this is going to be great. Maybe it's the start of a new job. Maybe it's the start of, of your marriage or fantastic house and Your thoughts are fueled by your view. And it's just like riding a bike. You start riding downhill and it's it's great. It's it's pretty easy. However, what I learned from my days cycling is this, is that before you get to the bottom of the next hill that you've got to go up, you better start pedaling. Because at the bottom of every hill, there's always another uphill. And in order to get to the top of the hill, I know it's simple. You've got to go up. You've got to go up. And I don't think it's pessimistic to know that sometimes on the journey of life, you've got to go uphill. You can still believe for the good and you can be faith-filled, but you've got to realize that at times there will be challenges. You know, it was the same with David in the Old Testament. He even said this, didn't he, in Psalm 23, that even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. David had this reality that even after hearing God, even though he had a heart after God, he knew that there were going to be valleys. He knew there were going to be difficulties. He knew that there were going to be challenges. And so my question for you this day is just because it's uphill, just because they're challenges, is that a reason for us to become pessimistic? I don't think so. Because remember, the Bible says that God works in all things for the good. He works for the good. Uh, The amount of times that I've seen optimistic people become pessimistic, Uh, the the, the amount of times that I've seen positive people become negative, faithful people uh, feel like that looks like they're being drained of their faith. But listen, it is not pessimistic to realize there are challenges. I've been in church leadership for over 20 years, over 25 years, in fact, and I can think of numerous times when I've seen friends and colleagues and leaders and and, and people just begin a a, a downward spiral. I think one of the things that made me notice it in them was just a, a change of language. They began to speak negatively, began to speak about difficulty more than they spoke about the reality of a God who works for the good. I wonder why it is that people do get pessimistic and negative and at times even bitter. Why is it that we at times can begin to speak doom and gloom over the season that we've been through. Did we think it was always going to be easy? 
I think for some reason, some Christian folk have began to equate ease with the purposes and will of God. But church, I really want to uh, destroy this myth for a moment that the will of God is not always easy. In fact, Paul says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. He says, I beat my body and make it a slave so that after I preach to others, I myself will not be disqualified from the prize. That doesn't sound easy. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, he says this, we're hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that his life may be revealed in our mortal bodies. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. And then even Jesus goes on and says in Luke chapter 14, 26, he says, if anyone doesn't come to me and not hate his father and mother, his wife, his children, his brothers and sisters, and yet even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Now, I don't know about you, but none of those passages sound easy to me. But David got it right when he was in the valley of the shadow of death. Because in Psalm 23, his, his focus was not on the valley. His focus was not on the shadow. His focus was on who was with him. For in Psalm 23, he says this, For God, you are with me. So here's it. Here's the challenge. That if God is good, and he works together for the good, and he works together in all things, then it doesn't matter what you are going through right now or what you will go through in a future season, you can believe for the good. Church, get ready. Good is is on its way in Jesus' name. A quote for the day is this, I know it's never always easy, but I know who is with me. Love you deeply, church. Have an absolutely brilliant day wherever you are and look forward to catching up with you soon. May God bless you.